Okay, so grade eight, uh, the lesson agreement between pronouns and antecedents, chapter 23.2 and page 525. It is, uh, it is about the agreements between pronouns and antecedents, just like we had agreements between verbs and subjects. Basically, like this, uh, this agreement is based on the number, the number of the pronoun and the, and the antecedent. So, <clears throat> We will begin with page 525, agreement between pronouns and antecedent. Now, an antecedent is the word or words for which a pronoun stands, right? We use a noun once, but then later on, we replace it with pronouns. For example, if I use the noun tally, I will use she or her or herself <clears throat> later on in, a, in my writing. So there are three kinds of uh, pronouns, first person, second person, and third person. Now, first person can be different depending on if it is singular or plural. Same way, second person, but, but second person remains the same because it is you and you for either singular or plural. But for third person, we, also, we have uh, a lot of variety, okay? Waiting <clears> room. <throat> Okay, so for the uh, for the for the third person, we have variations in using pronouns. So um, first of all, we need to know the shifts in person. Okay, please, you have to use the pronoun that you are refer referring to the antecedent. You have to use according to the antecedent. Sometimes there is shift in uh, pronouns and it changes the complete, the entire meaning of the sentence. <clears throat> For example, we had here two examples, two sentences. The students know we must check the answers before handing in tests. And the second one was the students know they must check the answers before handing in tests. So there is a complete different meaning because of the shifts in the pronouns. Here, in the first one, I will explain you further. And please, if there is any question, write, write it down in the chat. Okay. Okay. So, it is. Yeah. So, here is uh, right in front of you the, the two examples. I have written them separately on a different paper, on a different sheet. The students know we must check the answers. So here I have highlighted both the pronouns in both the sentences. In the first one, it is we, and the second one, it's they. The rest of the context is the same. So <clears throat> the idea of using pronoun, like why we have given you the, these two examples specifically, because to make you understand how shift in pronoun can change the whole meaning. In the first sentence, when, when you are saying the students know we must check the answers, it means we refers to not the students, but to something else. Maybe the teachers, okay? The students know that the teachers must check the answer. So maybe I am the teacher, I, we are the teacher. So we, I, we can say the students know we must check the answer, the teacher. So here I can like make you understand more with this picture, okay? And they help? So, yes. <clears throat> didn't we take this lesson and yes, you gave I us the answer? I'm repeating it because I feel like you didn't understand it really well. Okay. Okay. So, uh, wait a second. Yeah. So, the student know we must check the answers means maybe the teachers. Know, for example, uh, we are the teachers. We are saying that the students know we, the teachers, must check the answers. In the second case, the students know they must check the answers. Now, here, <clears throat> they means the student themselves. Because since we were talking about students and they the third person pronoun, so it refers back to students, which is the antecedent of they. So the students know that the student themselves, the student like they, should check the answers. The picture is right in front of you. So it's not that the sentences are wrong. It's not that the sentences are become wrong because of uh, the different use of pronouns over here. It just it, it is just that the meaning is changed. Okay, the meaning 
is completely changed if we use the non pronoun. <clears throat> now, avoiding pro problems with number and gender. Uh, so here, the biggest problem that we face is with the number and gender, especially with the collective pronouns. Like here, we had an example here, the audience showed its approval with applause. And in the plural form, it is the audience voted for their favorite song. Now, as we uh, took these in uh, subject verb agreement, a collective noun can function both as a unit or as individual members of that group. Okay, how do we know if it is working as a unit? It's working as a unit and it will be single. Look, the audience showed its approval. It is working as a single unit because the entire group, the entire audience, all the members that are in the audience are doing the same thing. And there is one outcome of it. There's one single outcome of their action. For example, here, the audience cheered, okay? They showed, they gave applause, all of them, for their approval. But in the second one, the audience voted for their favorite songs. Now, when the audience is voting for their favorite songs, they are doing it individually. And the outcome is not the same. And one more thing, you can, and like one more hint that, uh, that is present in the sentence is, here we are using the plural noun songs, their favorite songs, okay? And so every member obviously will have a different favorite song. Not all of them will have the same. So they can't act as a, un as a unit here. But here it's approval, approval was, Approval was a single, it was a single noun. Okay, so there is one single outcome, but here there is mul there are multiple outcomes like song, song. Okay, so that's the thing. That's the way. Like that's the way you can uh, figure out whether it's singular or it is plural. Now, in the second one, the audience voted for their favorite <coughs> songs. Now, look at this picture over here. There is audience and they are voting. Some, some of them are saying yes, some of them are saying no, and some of them are saying don't know. So there is, there are different, there are different out, the outcomes, there are different uh, answers from each one, from each of the member of the audience. So that's why we consider them as plural here, as plural. Therefore, I'm using their, not its. You get it? Next is <clears throat> making pronouns agree in number with compound nouns. Now, when we have compound nouns, I will make you understand it with this slide over here. Look, when we have compound nouns, we have them joined by in two ways, either by and, and if they are joined by and, they are always plural. <laughs> We always consider them plural, and hence we use always a plural noun for them. For example, Sarah and Ali are Sarah and Ali have brought their books, so we will always use plural nouns. For example, there, there. Okay. Next is or or nor. This is the second way the compound nouns will be joined by by or or nor. For example, Sarah or Sala will bring their book. Now, their here is, is not fitting at all. So we will not use their, we will use her because we are talking about one person. Okay, about either Sarah or Sala. Sarah or Sala, I'm not talking about them both combined. Both of them will not bring the book. One of them will bring the book. So if one of them, because if there is or, I have to use singular pronoun. Sarah or Sala will bring her book, not their book. In the same way, there's one more way. Uh, they can be joined by uh, correlative conjunctions, uh, either or, neither nor. Now these kind of conjunctions come together, okay, in a sentence, they do not come alone, either or, neither nor. So even with these kind of conjunctions, if nouns are uh, joined by neither, for example, neither Sara nor Tala will bring her book. Or you can say either Tala or Sarah will bring her book. So whatever the case, whenever it is joined by or or either or, 
nor or neither nor. It is always considered singular and we, we always use singular pronouns. Now, examples. Sarah or Sarah will bring her speech. Sarah or Faris will bring his or her. Now, this is one case when, may, when we may have one uh, noun as, as the, who's drawing on my screen? <laughs> who is drawing? <laughs> okay, so who's, who's drawing on my screen? <laughs> okay, thank you for erasing. <laughs> no, yeah, there is something in the chat. <laughs> okay, no problem. Yeah, so I am why you're joining back and thank you for putting my name. Sala. <laughs> you're right. Teacher, I knew who did this. It's Judy. Judy Rashid. Teacher Judy Rashid she because she has private. phone. Because teacher she has phone. So she can draw easy. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> fine. No problem. Okay, so the next one is Sarah or Faris. Now, in in a um, in a in a sentence, when we have both the nouns that are joined by or, now when we when we have compound nouns that are joined by and, we don't have an issue using um, we don't have an issue or we do not have a second thought in using a pronoun because it is always there because it is always there because we're talking about both. So it becomes plural. So hence it becomes plural. We we use plural uh, pronoun. But when we have them joined with or nor either or neither nor the 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 um, okay. yeah so uh, when we have joined them with or the um, the pronoun depends on whether both of those compounds com uh, those nouns sorry both of those nouns are female or male so if they are female both of them for example sara or tala i can use her i can use her because both of them are girls if in if there is a case where I have one noun female and the other male, in that case I will use his or her. Okay, so Sarah or Faris will bring his or her. I gave you these two examples side by side so that you can understand how we can use where we can use her or where we, where should we use his or her. The same case with everyone when we use indefinite pronouns. I will discuss them later, but for now. Just remember this, okay? Next is Sarah and Tala will bring their speech. So this was the case I was talking about that when we have them both joined with and, if, if they can, now compound nouns can be more than two. There is not a, a restriction on number two that they cannot exceed. They can be more than two. They can exceed two. So wherever uh, the number B, whenever they are joined with add, uh, sorry, with add, we always use <coughs> there there remember this please because you do a lot of mistakes with this thing okay you think that wherever like even if there is or we can use there no when it is joined with or please use singular please please and if there are two like male and female then please use his or her do not use his only or her only now next is the last one neither sarah nor tala will bring her speech now again i have both girls sarah or tala and I have the correlative conjunction, uh, which is uh, neither and nor. That's the reason I'm using her. If there is a boy, if there were a boy, if there were if there were two boys, for example, I would use uh, his speech. But if there would be uh, a combination of a boy and a girl, then I would use his or her. Now next, next is avoiding problems with gender. I explained it already to you. Now, I, so I will move on to the indefinite pronouns. Now, when we talk about the indefinite pronouns, indefinite pronouns do not have antecedents, which is clear, okay? When we took the lesson of pronouns, we knew that indefinite pronouns do not refer back to any antecedent, any specific antecedent. They don't have a specific, a particular antecedent. So 
That's why we call them indefinite. Indefinite means unclear or not clear or not specific. So here are some of the indefinite pronouns like everyone, each, anyone, someone, everything. They are always singular. That come always with singular pronouns because they are always considered singular. Okay, so they always come with singular pronouns. For example, if there is everyone, everyone in the room brought her book. Okay, so if I can, if I'm having a class of girls, I can say everyone in the room brought her, in the classroom brought her book. But maybe I have boys and girls together. So in that case, I will say everyone in my classroom brought his or her book. Clear? <clears throat> now, the same goes with someone, everything, each, anyone, everyone, and there are others, there are more than these that you can find in your book. And if you cannot find in the, on the same page, please go back to the lesson that was about pronouns, pronoun usage, and you will find it there. If you cannot even find it there, you go back to the first lesson, which is the part of speech, and in there, you will find the, uh, the pronouns, the kinds of pronouns, and you will definitely find the, the, the table over there that shows what indefinite pronouns, uh, how, how, many, how many are they. So let's move on to the example. Now look, all, uh, okay, that was about the indefinite pronouns that are always singular, but they are pronouns that are singular and plural, both, they can act like both, depending on what is coming next to them. For example, all, none, many, most. These are some of the indefinite, indefinite pronouns that can be plural or can be singular depending on the context. Okay, depending on their context. The first, first one here says, all of the streets are empty. Now, since I'm having streets after all, after all, I will consider all as plural. Therefore, I will use are and not is. Okay, so all of the streets are empty. And in the next one, all of the street. Now here, since there is one street, so I say I'll say all of the street is empty. Now this was about this is about the subject and uh, verb relationship. That's how we use subject and verb that agree in number. In the same way, you will use the subject and pronouns. For example, look over here. The incorrect one is, no, so, so the last one, sorry. All of the students in the group wanted to read their book. Because it is students, so they, they wrote their book, not his or her book. Yes, is there any question? Yes, yes, uh, Tala. <clears throat> now, if the noun was plural, we will write R, and if the noun is singular, we will put S. Yes, but with indefinite pronouns, yeah. With indefinite pronouns, that, that's why I showed you the subject verb agreement. Okay, here, one second. That's why I showed you the subject and verb agreement. We consider all as plural if the noun that is coming after it is plural. We consider all as singular if the noun that is coming after it is singular as is shown in the example. And same in the with none, and same with many, and same with most. So there are some indefinite pronouns that are dependent on what is coming next to them. So all of the streets are empty, streets are empty, or all of the street is empty. Now, uh, I want you to look at this 23.2b. Um, Sentence number 16, all members received his or her or their music. Now please give me an answer for this one only. I'm pointing it. It is 23.2b number 16. 
all members received his or her or their now it's all and members so what if, what it would be what the answer would be there 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 yes yes and then let's complete this further and he or she or they began practicing they they exactly because it is all they. and members all and members very good so i think you you're almost uh, familiar with everything now is there any problem now with this lesson no 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 you sure because i really yes. felt like you just mace has entered the why mace is leaving and entering and i are too teacher my internet yeah okay 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 fine so um Okay, good. So I will stop the recording at least. Okay. Okay.